Welcome to unit four of COM5 to 6. In this section, we'll look at string matching, which is finding uh, a substring in a longer text. And by and large, that is what happens if you hit Control F in almost any program. And uh, so I think it's, it's useful to know what's behind this. Uh, my goals are first to introduce you to a bit of notation for strings, something that we'll use over and over in the rest of the module. We'll concretely look at um, the knuth mohr spread algorithm in detail. Um, the other two, boyer mohr and rabin karp um, might, have to, uh, might have to be skipped, which in that case would, of course, mean you don't have to know about them. Um, I also want to cover the performance characteristics of the algorithms that we cover. Um, and this last point is something that I'll, I'll come back to. Uh, some of the things that, are, that have been invented for the string matching problem have found uses way beyond that. So making that connection, I think, is very useful. And uh, you can do some, um, I hope you can do some simple extensions of this by the end of it. We'll cover some notation now and look at the, the sim simplest way to solve the string matching problem. And then... Next week, we'll uh, cover the more sophisticated algorithms. Uh, but first, let's just talk about uh, strings more generally. So um, starting from, from the basics. First of all, strings are the same as texts. But uh, one of the two terms is sometimes more, more customary to use. Uh, I'll mostly use strings in this unit, uh, and later we'll, we'll talk about texts as strings that don't change too much. Mathematically, it's a sequence of characters, and so you know what a sequence is, but characters you still have to somehow define, and that will just be some, some finite set of, of letters. It's the st almost universal encoding for, uh, for data in com in computer-related contexts, and uh, with large language models, maybe even much more than that. In a way, even, even at the fundamental level, if you just have bits in a computer memory, you can see that as a binary string, a bit string. So if you want any, any data in a computer, anything discrete can be, can be encoded as a string. But we have many more concrete representations that are more specific, uh, but which are strings. Because it's used in so many different domains, it also means the tasks, the algorithmic problems, and the solutions um, are quite vast, and there's different, different ones. Uh, we'll cover some, some basic ones here. Specifically, we'll try to, try to solve the problem if you have a large text, which again is just a string, but we're, we're calling it text to distinguish it from the other string, namely the pattern. We're trying to find something in, in the long text. And so the standard kind of thing you have in mind, you have a Word document open, and you try to find all occurrences of COMP5 to 6 in that document. Then the text would be the Word document, and the pattern would be COMP5 to 6. It's the basis of many other applications, but also in itself is already useful. Uh, how many of you can, can use grep? <laughs> It's a, it's a Unix tool to search in files. It does control F, but the nerdy way, if you want. Uh, many virus scanners are essentially doing pattern matching. They do more sophisticated things now, too, but uh, they have patterns from known viruses that they scan your programs for as well. Right, let's get a bit mathematical on, on making things precise. The first thing we need is an alphabet. That's a set of characters that our strings are formed from. The important bit is it's always finite, so we're, we're usually assuming that the alphabet can be written down. Um, we say that a string is over an alphabet. It could be what you expect an alphabet to be, just letters from some script. Um, there's, of, of course, many of them with various various sizes. So we'll use capital sigma for the set of letters and the small sigma for the number of letters. 
just because that will be a parameter that pops up many, many times. It's useful to have a, a character for that. Uh, it can also be all Unicode characters. That's also an alphabet that's relevant in many, many cases. Um, I think this is, how many Unicode characters are there? I think it's around 130,000, something like that. Uh, Okay, I didn't write it down, but um, I think it's quite a lot. So all your favorite emoji, all scripts that were ever uh, written on Earth, plus Klingonian and um, all the useful stuff. Uh, but alphabets can also be small. It could be just binary or the nucleotides in your DNA, for example, uh, the basis. So many of the algorithms will have to uh, to deal with several parameters, the length of the string, but also the size of the alphabet. And uh, sometimes we'll have to keep the two in check. That's the alphabet. And then we have sequences over the alphabet. So in mathematical terms, this is the Cartesian product of that set. You form vectors or tuples or call them what you want. Um, I'll, I'll write them as Cartesian products sometimes, but the, the most common thing you'll find on slides is this notation, which says n characters from that alphabet. Uh, and we'll also use sometimes this star or plus, maybe the plus not so often. Sigma star just means any kind of length, so it's the union over all of those. Now the length of the strings is still finite, but uh, they can be arbitrarily long. That's what the sigma star is. And the last little one is the empty string, which will uh, I'll always denote with this little epsilon. Um, hope it's always unique, it's always unambiguous. So the empty string is just of length zero, has no characters, and so it's the same for all alphabets. That's the, the only exception. Other, any other string, you have to say what alphabet is from. All right. The last bit of notations we need is for um, talking about individual characters. And by and large, I will treat strings notation-wise as arrays. And in computers, usually strings are represented as arrays of characters. So it's close to how you usually manipulate them anyways. Um, so I'll use the, the brackets as before, and um, it's zero-based as before. Uh, in some other, in, in some books, you also find the subscript, so just to make you aware. There's operations on strings that we can do. We can take two strings and we can concatenate them, put the one after the other. And this looks like you put S in front of T. Mathematically, is often a shorthand for the multiplicative symbol. So it became customary to uh, use multiplication as the concatenation for strings. I'll, I'll usually just write it like this. And the last bit is we can take substrings of a string. We can take a range in the, in the string. And it can be from i up to j, including, so it's all of those letters. Um, I'll also use that notation when it's convenient. So i is included, but j is excluded. Um, and last bit is we have prefix and suffix. A prefix is a substring that starts at the beginning, and a suffix is a substring that ends at the end. Okay, good. Wake up time. Uh, let's see if that has, that has reached you. This is not supposed to be a trick question. Simple, quick one. And you have the formula on your phone, so I'll go back to the definitions. Oops, you have not seen this. Right, the, the overwhelming majority seems to be, seems to be clear. Should have hidden the, 
<laughs> the answers first. Well, for the record, uh, almost all got this right, and So why is it true? Remember sigma star, these are all the strings of any length, and that included the length zero, right? Uh, it starts with length zero, and the plus is it starts with length one. So if I take any string, I can get any string of an arbitrary length if it either has length at, at least one, or it has length zero. So I've covered all, all options here for these two. Okay. Last definition for this part is our actual algorithmic problem. So let's also be specific about that. Uh, we have two inputs. We have a text. It will always be called t and it will always have length n. Okay. Try to memorize these, uh, but they'll, they'll come up on the slides many, many more times. t like text. That's supposed to be a big thing. That's a book that you try to find something in. And then P is a pattern of length M over the same alphabet. And usually that is much shorter than the total text, but it might still be big. So uh, it can't be searching for a single word, but it could also be searching for a bigger pit. Now, what's the output? Um, for this unit, we'll find the first occurrence of the pattern in the text. It can occur many more times, but finding the first one is good enough because we can call the method again, starting from looking at the suffix of the text. So we can find all occurrences if we want to, um, but sometimes it's useful to just check if it occurs at all. And so that's more versatile. Uh, formally, if you want to be very precise, um, the output should be the smallest i in the range of indices from 0 to n minus m, so that the text, if you start at position i and read for m characters, that piece of that substring is exactly the same as our pattern. So we find the smallest i, so that i up to i plus m, this part, that's t i up to i plus m, that should be exactly our pattern P. Now, sometimes it doesn't occur, and then you just return some, some special value, no match. The variant where you find all occurrences. Uh, oh, thank you. Right. It works. Still. <laughs> the variant where we want to find all occurrences, you can do that iteratively. Uh, let's do a tiny example. Uh, here's your very, very long text. Where is he? If you ask for the pattern he, then the first occurrence is here. And that starts at index 1. Remember, we start with 0. And uh, if I ask for who, the result should be no match. OK, um, I'm aware that you don't normally implement the algorithms I'm going to show you in this, in this unit because they already are implemented. And so uh, you, can, you can use them, but you should know what's behind them to understand the performance characteristics and how long these things might take. Uh, in Java, it's string index of, and in Python, it's, it's the find method if you have a string uh, that, that does essentially this first occurrence. Um, just to practice one last time. 
Let's do this one. And this is again not supposed to be a trick question. Okay, uh, we have a clear majority. For P526 and that's correct. So uh, I tried to show you, uh, but it's, it's very tiny. All you really have to do is put the numbers, the indices um, on top of the letters. And then you start reading at index three with the P and you stop just before seven. And here's that in, in nicer.